and welcome to a tutorial video on Kiko's Knitting Podcast. Today I want to show you how to knit a banana sock. A banana sock looks like this, it looks a little like a banana and it's another kind of sock where you don't have to knit a heel. And it's really easy to knit and I'm going to show you the sock on a sock blocker just, just to show that the banana really fits onto a foot. This is what it looks like. And one half of the sock you knit a two by two rib and the other half you knit stockinette and reverse stockinette stitch. And that's why this side pulls in like this and the back side of the sock pulls in sideways. And that's why it really fits nicely as a sock. And I thought to be able to show you something new every time, I'm going to show you how to do a crochet on cast on. As you can see, it's very elastic and it looks really nice. You have this kind of stitch, stitches running on top of the sock. And I also want to show you how to knit the toe with the sideways decreases. Forgot to look up what this toe is called. Um, I do prefer the star toe usually, but with the banana sock you do have a proper up and down of the sock. So I thought it'd be nice to have this kind of toe where you can see where you have top and bottom and where right and left is. So let's get started. I'm going to knit out of this yarn. It's a six ply opal yarn. It's a kit size. It's German size 22-23. It really fit, but it would also fit a smaller foot with a longer leg. And if the foot was even a bit longer, we'd have shorty socks. So you can wear these socks for a wide range of sizes. And they're also great to give as gifts if you don't really know the size of somebody. To do a crochet cast on, you start with a um, with this, uh, what do you call that? where you put a sling, a slip, something on your crochet needle. Then you grab your knitting needle. Um, you only have to have one needle. I usually cast on with two needles, but with this way, it'll be very elastic with one needle. So you have your a slip stitch on your crochet hook. You put the knitting needle on top of the yarn. You go over the knitting needle, grab the yarn and pull it through your loop. It's a loop that you put on your crochet hook and you crochet a loop. And that's how you make one stitch on your knitting needle. Then you take the yarn behind the knitting needle. You go over the knitting needle with your crochet hook. You grab the yarn, you pull it through your loop and you've created another loop on your knitting needle. Sometimes the yarn uh, tends to split. Now I have two stitches on my knitting needle, go behind the knitting needle, grab the yarn again and every time I grab the loop with the crochet hook and go through the loop on the needle, I have a new stitch on the needle and the only thing you have to remember is to put the yarn behind the knitting needle so you can create a stitch by grabbing the yarn on top of the knitting needle. When you cast on like this, you cast on one stitch less than you need in the end. For these socks, I have cast on 28 stitches. I've knit with 28 stitches. If you use uh, double pointed needles, that'll be seven stitches per needle, or um, you can do it a bit differently. I'll show that a little later. And even with the double pointed needles, I probably use three needles, not four, because seven stitches per needle is very small number and you have to switch needles all the time. Now let's count two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 23. So that's 24, 25, 26 and 27. So the last stitch that I need is on my crochet hook. So I'm going to put the loop from the crochet hook onto the knitting needle and now I have 28 stitches. 
So this is the crochet cast on. It's very elastic. It looks nice. You have this really nice edge on top of your sock. And now we can start knitting. With my banana sock, I've done a ribbing of knit two purl two. You can do that. You don't have to. You can do a one by one rib, knit one purl one, or you can go straight into the pattern any way you like. Now I'm going to start knitting with knit two and then purl two. And for the first needle, I'm going to knit seven stitches. So that's six, that's seven. I push the seven stitches in the middle of my needle, grab the next needle. And as I've ended the needle with a purl one, I'll have to go on with another purl one. <clears throat> so I have the purl two, then knit two, purl two, and then I'm going to knit two more. <clears throat> that gives me another seven stitches. And I can grab the next needle and I'm going to knit the remaining stitches onto the one needle. So I know that in some countries it's quite usual to have the stitches on three needles and very often you will have one half of the stitches on one needle and then split the other half of the stitches on two other needles. But in Germany the usual thing is to put the stitches on four needles and use the fifth one for knitting. <clears throat> Sorry that the needles are hitting the table a bit. I hope it's not too annoying, the noise. But I can't lift my hands a lot higher because of the camera. So I've ended the round with purl two. So I can start again with knit two. Now I'm going to close it to knit in the round. So I bring the end of my round together with the beginning of round. I make sure that nothing is um, turned around the needle. So the cast on is underneath the needles. The stitches are on top of the needles. Then I can take my now empty needle and I knit the first stitch with the yarn that comes from the last stitch. And that's how I close it to the round. And I have can actually knit in the round. So I knit two, then I purl two, and I can do the ribbing for as high as I like. I did eight rounds, but you don't have to have a ribbing at all. You could start straight away with your proper pattern. You could do knit one, purl one, or you could do stockinette and reverse stockinette stitch. Um, um, like the front of the sock as the top part, that would look fun too. So this is what it looks like if you put the stitches on four needles and then you could knit with the fifth. But yeah, that's the ribbing. I have prepared something, so I have a finished ribbing already on a different set of needles. As I said, I did eight rounds because the pattern um, is a eight round repeat, then I like to have eight rounds of ribbing, but you don't have to do it that way. It's just something that I like. Now I want to um, start knitting the proper pattern. So here you can see half my stitches will stay in this ribbing pattern. And now I have to make a decision how I want to start and finish the ribbing. With this sock, I started and ended with purl two but I could start with one purl and end with one purl if I have a different number of stitches. I could start with knit two and end with knit two, but you just have to make a decision. Um, you could even start with knit two and end with purl two, so it's not perfectly symmetrical, but it's easier to knit. So with this one, I started and ended with knit two, with, but the other sock started and ended with purl two. It doesn't really matter, but it does depend on what number of stitches you are knitting with, whether half your stitches are divisible by four or by eight. No, by four or by two. Whatever. <laughs> you just look at the number of stitches you want to use and then you look at half your stitches and make a decision where to have the backside and where to have the front. The front is easy. 
because you switch between stockinette stitch and reverse stockinette stitch, the only decision is do you start with the knit stitches or do you start with the purl stitches. So with this, ribbing goes with this sock and I started with the purl stitches and I started the ribbing with knit stitches. So let me think, I'm going to do the part that starts with the knit two. This is going to be my ribbing, so this is going to be the back of my sock. So this um, makes sure it fits on a ver variety of uh, width, so whether you have a uh, wider foot or not. And the front, I will either knit knit all the stitches or purl all the stitches. I start by purling, so I'm going to purl all those stitches. And the pattern that I'm knitting or purling now, I'm going to repeat for four times. So I'll do it once, repeat three times for, a, um, for four rows all together. So the back side always stay in the same rip pattern. For me, it's knit to purl to, and only the stitches on the top of the foot will either be knit or purled. So I think the knitting is a bit easier with the banana sock um, compared to the spiral sock because with the spiral sock you always have to knit three, purl three or maybe knit four and purl four and after four rounds you have to move it one stitch to the side and you just have to be a bit more careful with that pattern moving it one stitch to the side. With this pattern it's a lot more obvious. So I think the knitting for the banana sock is a bit easier. But the advantage of the spiral sock is that um, you can just pull it on any which way, especially for small children who start dressing themselves. They don't have to pay attention. They can just pull them on. And it also means that because you wear them any which way, you will step on different parts of the sock. So they should last longer. With the banana sock, you have a proper up and down, you will always walk on the rib side of the sock the way you always walk on the sole side of a normal sock, but it means the banana sock is probably not going to last longer than normal socks. Um, but still, it's a sock that with children it will grow with them and you can give them to people where you don't know the proper size. And another thing that I like to do is keep them at home as house shoes or guest socks for guests who get cold feet and uh, they want to borrow a pair of socks or sometimes I tend to give them away to guests if they really like the socks a lot um, and that gives me a reason to keep knitting new socks. So there's one more round that where I purl the stitches and then I'll show you how to count the rounds. You can use a row counter, a round counter that you can hang on your needles and then every round you push it one further or you can use a row, row counter where you have to push or um, turn something or with the Knit Companion app you can just tap your phone for every round you do and then every fourth round you can ch change the pattern. Um, there are other apps where you can count things. Um, there's many ways to keep track of your four rounds. You can just write them down and, um, the way we used to do but you can also learn to read your knitting and I think that's a good skill to have so I just want to show you with purl stitches it's quite easy to see this thread is one row so it's one this is two this is three and the one that's just underneath the needle this is the fourth row um, but if you had knit the stitches you could also count you don't do it where you already had knit stitches, but you go where you change from purl to knit. Um, so this is the last purl stitch. And then you have this sort of V looking at you. So that's row one. This is round two, round three, and this is round four underneath my needle. So from both sides, I can see I've done four rounds. So I can change from purl, purling to knitting, to knit stitches. And by changing from reverse stockinette to stockinette, 
and back again, that will give the sock its form. You could also do five rounds of purl and five rounds of knit if you wanted. You don't have to do it exactly this way. The most important thing is that you have these different kind of rip patterns um, so that the sock um, forms the way it's supposed to. And the banana form is just what really fits nicely on a foot. I haven't knit any for myself yet, but I've been able to uh, try several on that Friends of Knit and they fit really well. So this is all you need to know to knit the pattern. So let's have another look at the finished sock. So these are the four rounds, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, so forth. What you can see for this sock, I had the rib pattern on one needle and I had the stockinette, reverse stockinette on two needles. And you can see it's not quite even. That's where I had um, went from one needle to the other. It doesn't matter. Usually once you've washed the sock, it'll be completely invisible. And even if it wasn't, I don't mind. It's just a shock a sock nobody's going to check. So now you can knit as long as you like. The width and the length should be sort of fitting together so that's why I was using the, um, the sock blocker to see. And now I'm going to show you how to knit this toe. Um, I started the pattern with stockinette so I stopped with the stockinette here you can see the ribbing and then I did the toe but the other sock I've prepared already something and I started with the reverse stockinette and now I want to stop with the reverse stockinette and now I'm going I'm just going to uh, knit the toe to show you I'm going to undo that later so that the socks have the same same length I just didn't finish that in preparation so with these needles they're called crazy trio in Europe I'm not quite sure if they call the same everywhere. I think higher, higher calls than flyers, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, um, here you have two needles where you have your stitches and you knit with a third and it goes perfectly with this pattern because you have one needle for the ribbing and you have one needle for the stockinette, reverse stockinette, and it would actually be exactly the same if you knit with magic loop. So in preparation of the toe, I'm going to knit a whole round. So the toe is knit in stockinette stitch. That's what you usually do. You don't have to, but that's what you usually do. And in preparation, I'm going to knit one full round. So where I had the ribbing for the back of the sock, I'll be knitting all the stitches. And then for the top of the sock, the front of the sock, I'm also going to knit all the stitches if you had ended your pattern with the stockinette part, you don't really have to do that. You could start with your toe straight away. But um, as I've here finished with the reverse stockinette, I'm going to knit one row because I just think that the decreases look a bit neater if you have one round of stockinette around. Sorry that the needles are hitting the table and making some noise but they are a bit longer than the, than the uh, double pointed needles. Well, I come a bit closer. It's not too close, I hope, but it'll be a bit quieter. <clears throat> now I'm going to do the um, decreases. A lot of patterns will tell you to start in the middle of the heel of the sock um, and they'll start with the left side. But with this pattern that we are knitting, it doesn't make sense to start in the middle of the needle. So I'm going to start the decreases on the beginning of that needle and I'll show you how to work them for both sides. And basically you can start wherever you want. So with this kind of toe, you don't include the first and last stitch of half the sock in your decreases. I'll show how to do that. <coughs> Sorry. So I'll knit the first stitch and then I'll do the first decrease. And this is what usually is called an SSK decrease. But in Germany, what we usually or traditionally used to do is um, slip one stitch 
and then we knit one stitch and then we pull the slip stitch over. So that gives you a left leaning decrease and looks like this. I'll show you different ways of doing that. Now I knit until three stitches before the end of this half of the sock. This would be three stitches before the end of the needle. If it was double pointed needles, I might have to knit another needle. But once I'm here, I have to do a knit two together. So that's quite simple. Uh, I'll just show you two different ways. Then I knit the last stitch, I turn round and I repeat the same thing. Only that I'm going to show you the proper SSK. So I knit the first stitch and I'll do the SSK slip one stitch knit wise, slip another stitch knit wise, put the left needle back into the stitches and then knit the two stitches together as if I was knitting through the back loop. So it's another left leaning decrease. It sort of looks exactly the same as the other one. Um, now I knit again to three stitches before the end. I knit two together. And the last stitch is knit by itself. Then I've done the first decrease round. This is a fairly small sock. So I am going to do the decreases every other round. <clears throat> And I'm going to do that twice. So I knit one round in between the decreases. If you have bigger socks and more stitches, uh, you might be told to do the decreases every fourth round. So after the first round, you'd have to knit three rounds and then decrease. And then you'll have to do the decreases every third round, so and so often. So that would mean that you knit two rounds and then you decrease again and then it'll tell you how often to do the decreases every other round. That's what we're doing now. And then it usually ends with doing the decreases every round. And why I've talked, I've knit a round. Now I can do another decrease round. So I'm going to knit the first stitch. I'm going to, to I'll do a slightly different SSK. I slip as if to knit then slip as if to purl, then put the left hand needle through and knit them together. Doesn't really look a lot different. It's a left leaning decrease. Then I'll go to three stitches before the end. I'll knit two together, knit the last stitch by itself, turn round, do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to knit one stitch. And now I'll do the same. I'll slip one as if to knit, but instead of slipping the next as if to purl, I'll just put my needle in at the same time. I put the left needle into the first stitch, knit them together. It's the same left leaning decrease, but it works a bit quicker because you don't have to slip and then put it back onto the needle. Now for knitting two stitches together, there is one other way of doing that especially if you have to knit more stitches together and you don't get your needle into both stitches. What you can do is you only knit the first stitch and then you slip it back to the left hand needle and you slip the next stitch over. And you can do that with as many stitches as you want. It's another right leaning decrease and you don't have to put the needle in both stitches at the same time. It's usually not a problem if you knit two stitches together, but sometimes if you have to knit three together or four or even five stitches, if you do some very fancy lace knitting or something like that, it can be a lot easier to do to just knit one stitch and then slip as many stitches over as the pattern calls for. Or one less. If you have to knit five stitches together, you knit one and then you slip four of them over. So now I've knit one round in between. I'm still decreasing every other round. So I'll do another decrease round. And I think after that I can go into decreasing every round. But that's something that you always have to look up and check with your pattern. Um, So that's the reason I'm not such a fan of this toe. 
because depending on what size uh, what size you knit and how many stitches you have you always have to check how often you have to decrease which round with the star toe it's so much easier because you always knit as many rounds as you had stitches between your decreases it's a bit more logical and easy to remember for any size but with this um, toe it sort of changes for every um, stitch count you can have so I have to do two more decreases and I think they have to be done every round but I'll check with my first sock here you can see decrease round decrease yeah so now I decrease every round so I'll be knitting the first stitch as usual and I go straight into the decrease another SSK there's still two stitches in between the decreases knit two together knit one turn round do the same thing on the other side and one knit SSK decrease and then knit two knit two together and knit one and that brings me to the last round of decreases and there I knit a stitch I do my left leaning decrease slip knit and pull over then I go straight into knitting two together because that's the last three stitches and I knit one if I was knitting with double pointed needle I'd have two stitches per needle sometimes I like to knit them onto one needle to make sure I don't lose any so knit one SSK and then knit two together and knit one and I end with eight stitches all together and now I could cut the yarn, pull the yarn through the stitches. I like to do that with my knitting needles. I show that in the video with the spiral socks. I won't do it now because I want to undo the toe again because this way it'd be slightly too tiny. <laughs> so you can see the line of left leaning decreases and the line of right leaning decreases. And it is a toe that looks really nice. As I said, it's just that I can't remember the numbers which is why I don't knit it that often but it is a nice toe and once I've put the yarn through the stitches I'll put the yarn onto a darning needle and then I'll thread them I usually thread them through the stitches again and then I pull it to the inside of the sock and there I will weave in the end I'm sometimes asked about how I do that let's see if I can show that so I push the yarn through the stitches here and there and then I put them through the stitches in the ribbing you can see that a tiny little bit and the first my beginning yarn I put through those stitches you can see that a little bit I think I'm going to do um, an extra video just about weaving in ends this is the um, sock turned inside out the pattern is exactly the same from both sides. It's the ribbing this way and it's the stockinette, reverse stockinette. The only place that shows you which way is the right side is the toe. You could also wear it this way. Then you'd have the stockinette side on your toes if you prefer that. That's no problem. Okay, that's how you knit a banana sock. I hope it was easy to understand. I hope it will help you to knit your own banana socks. Please, um, if you knit them, I'd be really happy if you share them in my Ravelry group for Kiko's Strickschule. There'll be a um, discussion thread just for banana socks and I'm going to announce a knit along for banana socks mid-August 2023. If you watch the video now, you can join along. If you should watch the video later, please join anyway. And I'll, I'm always happy to see pictures of um, people's project in the Ravelry group. So feel free to share anytime you knit your banana socks. And I hope you enjoyed the video and you enjoy knitting your banana socks. See you in the next one. Bye.